Hello everyone, I'm Jonas, and as you might have figured out from the link, today I will be talking about architecture, and in particular architectural inspiration for level designers, um, and the reason why most game developers and level designers should study at least a bit of architecture. Um, the reason, or the main reasons, is um, basically architecture has the same sense of scale as games do. Because most games have an avatar that moves uh, basically on their own two legs. Once you start adding in vehicles or flying vehicles and stuff like that, um, you basically get a different sense of scale. But architecture is based around the movement speed of a single individual walking, uh, maybe riding a bike, in a sort of enclosed area. And once you get into the vehicles and the uh, sort of moving at a different pace, you run into something like uh, city planning or the uh, organic growth of cities, which I intend to come back to in a later video. But today I will be mainly keeping the ideas on the level of, um, of an office building or something like a few buildings around a park, but not uh, something like vehicles or things like that, basically single building only. Uh, because the openness that comes from having uh, the level of city planning uh, is basically hard to recreate in games because the amount of content you need to fill it out basically goes up exponentially as you increase the areas. Um, so city planning and stuff like that comes a bit later. And another reason why you should be studying some architecture is because uh, architecture in games is pretty cheap to achieve. Uh, compare it to something like an architect who's trying to build a really complex building. Um, the stages from the, uh, the model to the finished building might be several years, but in something like game development you can have... whoops, wrong layer. Uh, you start out with the sketch, then you have the the concept painting. Uh, so a sketch might take uh, a couple of hours, a concept painting a day or a couple of days. Then you have the 3D model, uh, which is something like a week to a month, depending on sense of scale, I suppose. And then you have something like a real building, which is... Uh, with you know a lot of different rules about building and fire exits and inspections and stuff like that could be like several years from uh, you have the idea to the finished one while going from the start to a sketch you can easily refine your ideas as well as change things easily uh, once you have the plan done for the real building i like i'm not an architect but i expect that you can't really change much of it if you're not quite happy with it. Um, so the first reason is that it's kind of cheap. Compare something like make a, a real building that exists, replicate that in a 3D model or make something entirely new. Like the the cost of being original isn't really that much. Um, it also helps provide a setting um, both to uh, sell like realism um, let's say that you want to sell realism in your game. That means that the buildings in the game must look like real buildings. Uh, maybe not the ones you see out your own window, but you must be able to, let's say you have been in, uh, in uh, the States, for instance, and you have seen skyscrapers in New York. Then if you're trying to create a really big city in your game, they must look at least something like those skyscrapers. But if you're trying to make a game set in the 25th century um, and you want to sell uh, sort of high-tech stuff, then the buildings should probably not look as much as the settings, cities or stuff we have today. Because um, for people who are like below 30 today, they will probably live to see the end of the um, the engine as we have it today that releases uh, fumes and stuff. So pollution will probably not be an issue, for instance, in 50 years. Um, so 
as technology progresses, if you have, for instance, faster than light travel and uh, laser guns that kill people, uh, you should probably have different buildings as well. Uh, they will still probably be uh, easily identifiable as buildings, even if they look uh, really different, both inside and outside. Um, so you can either try to sell realism, or you can try to sell um, differences, both from other games, and as well as uh, different sort of civilizations, because different civilizations will probably build differently from one another. Just look at something like StarCraft. Uh, the three races, they all have uh, different technologies, and so their buildings all look different. Uh, while uh, once you get to space traveling and different sort of races, um, sure they will, if they're friendly towards one another, they will probably learn and start to become more similar, but they will still likely have uh, different looks for everything. Um, so the first sort of group I have today is the simple shapes. Um, basically what this is, is taking something like, uh, you see on the right side here, which is basically a box. Um, as you might have noticed in the earlier videos, my drawing is kind of shitty. But yeah, you can easily identify the basic box shape. And then what you have is a uh, sort of negative space carved out of the... Um, the major building here. It's not much, but it helps to sell, like, this is, it's not your average building, like, it's not the sort of grey and brown stuff over here. Even if this is a bit older, you can easily uh, see this as a new thing. Um, here's another sort of negative area, uh, there's a bit missing from the top, there's a bit missing over here. And there's a bit missing here. So you have a few different areas. And this is easily buildable with stuff like um, if you have sort of a modular building kit uh, with pieces. You just basically uh, create the outline and then you just add like, let's say you have sort of blocks like this. Dum, 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 dum. Get a different texture. Boom. You have a sort of a, it's a really simple shape. You can basically build this on your own. Once I get to the advanced shapes later, you will probably need um, a good modeler if you're not on your own. I'm not. So, um, again, this on the other side is basically it's basically a block shape to begin with, and then they remove certain parts um, to make an entirely new looking thing, even though it's not actually that big of a difference. Um, and the thing with the simple shapes is that uh, most of the examples I have in this one is they or often play with uh, sort of the difference between what is outside and what is inside. Um, sure, it it becomes a lot easier if you live in a part of the world where you don't have like the winters we have here, which become you know negative twenty or thirty degrees Celsius and a lot of snow. So if you're in uh, I don't know, California or whatever. Um, you can basically have these sort of open areas um, whenever you choose because you're unlikely to get snow. <laughs> and so that's the, the basic part of these simple shapes. You're basically taking something, adding and subtracting different forms or different elements. Um, like in this next picture here, um, it's basically just a really big building, and I'm drawing on the long, wrong layer again. It's, it tend, tends to happen a lot, like every other frame. Um, so you have this massive sort of building, but what you might not have noticed is that it's actually a sort of a trainway station, um, as well as a park over here on the left. Um, so this might be uh, on the uh, the overly large side of things in a game having such a big open area will make it really hard to expect where the, or lead the player towards somewhere unless you have like you have the big exclamation mark in the sky here is where you should be going into the door um, so you know uh, something like uh, Grand Theft Auto might incorporate something like this, but it's still on the very large scale. I just included it to show that um, 
having something like a railway station, which tends to be a really open uh, sort of wasted area in the middle of a big city, can still incorporate something like a shopping mall or uh, this could be an office space, uh, which tends to have a lot of noise. But uh, let's say it's in the future. So we have hover trains, which don't make as much noise. And you sort of mix different areas to come up with the different results. You could have even uh, the park on top of the uh, the rail yard just to sort of cover it up because uh, in game space we don't have to worry about fire exits or emergencies or stuff like that. Um, so the next example here is um, actually two sort of buildings. It's a really simple shape, uh, this one. It's just four different blocks added up to another. And then in the background here you have, uh, I think it's called Sky City or Cloud City or something like that. Uh, you can't see it, but it's basically two towers or skyscrapers. The other one is in the back here. Uh, and then they have a sort of a cloudy central structure. Uh, and then you have a twisted sort of thing over here, which is more of the advanced shapes, which will come later. But as you can see here, just adding up really, really simple shapes, you can have something that um, basically takes the entire skyline. Uh, if you have a sort of low city in your game, and then you just add one building such as this one, uh, you basically end up with something like uh, the Citadel in Half-Life 2. It's a really big landmark, you can see it from anywhere, and using that you can basically um, find your way through the city, because you're always knowing uh, in what way you're moving. Um, the last example I have here uh, of the simple shapes is uh, all of the other ones uh, that I showed before are basically um, positive shapes atop of the flat earth. Um, and the last one here is more of a negative space thingy uh, because it's cut out of the solid rock of the, uh, the mountain here. Um, something like rock cut architecture um, is something that I've been looking at uh, a lot lately. It's mostly about you know, really old temples and stuff where they dig uh, the entire temple out of the uh, the wall, like uh, what's it called? The one that's in um, Indiana Jones in is it Gebra or something? Um, basically, most of the rock cut thingies are really old, and they're either Buddhist temples um, or uh, ancient Egyptian stuff or stuff like that. Um, most uh, most of the time, digging um, really big things through small holes um, takes a lot of time. But in again, in game space, we don't really have to worry about things taking time because building the structure out in the open would probably take the same amount of time as digging it out of terrain. And uh, I'm not sure if there's any game engine that can properly handle uh, terrain as mass. Um, so you'd probably have to build um, the sort of entrances in uh, a separate model or something like that. But it's a thought anyway. Uh, you could even have it, uh, you know, let's say you just have a straight corridor uh, in your game. You're just running along it. And uh, then you take that same corridor and you place it up here. So the view is from the mountain. Uh, instead of just being in a random basement somewhere, you're just running along, looking out through the window, and you see this amazing landscape. Um, so placement is important. And taking some, uh, some things from, uh, from architecture will probably help you, just to find different sort of settings. Um, everyone probably remembers the cliffside chapter from uh, the first Half-Life. I don't really remember what it's called, but... Um, it's basically just a skybox landscape and then you have your terrain that you're following. Um, for the next step I have the the complex shapes. Um, the difference between these and the simple shapes is basically that the simple shapes uh, are just basically stuff that you could create on your own as a level designer or that I could create on my own. Uh, and the complex shapes, um, while they still have the same ideas. 
you probably need a modeler as well as someone who can texture stuff and make custom textures um, to create something like this. Um, if you compare this, um, uh, the, you still have the basic box shape and then you just remove things. But in this case, it's circles instead of boxes. So everything becomes sort of different. Um, and the one on the left here, um, it basically uses, let's say this is a shopping mall. It uses sunlight, but instead of having the, the classic sort of building that is, um, you know, it's, uh, that was a shitty way to draw it. Uh, this is a top view instead. So you have the building all around the the main shaft, I suppose. Um, something like this. It uses sunlight through the main shaft. This here is the same idea. It just places the shaft in a different direction. Um, so once you reach the, the end of the day or the morning, I don't really know which, uh, the sunlight, it uh, shines in through the opening here and basically illuminates the entire building from within. Um, so keeping track of lighting is also important for buildings. Um, and even though we can fake a lot of it just by placing lights wherever we want to, keeping it in mind is still important if you're moving and making transitions from outdoor to indoor spaces. Uh, my next example here is, again, it's on the super big side of things. Um, and it's a really cool uh, shape, in my opinion. Um, the bottom left here, it's basically a building that's running into the the hillside on the left. And then you have uh, the forest going up onto the top of the other building that sort of spirals around. And then you have roads and stuff. Again, uh, let's pretend that you, uh, you take the... Uh, the stuff here you could basically build over the road so the road goes underground and you have a really cool looking building in the middle of what looks like you know forest and grasslands and uh, I don't know tennis courts or whatever it is on the bottom here um, so this sort of twisted shape is again uh, it's an idea you might not have the uh, the resources to go with it but you can still keep it in mind um, as my next example, I have this, which is, it's just a bridge basically, um, that has stairways on the sides. So you can choose to move basically in the middle up here where the ground is flat, or you can choose to keep moving up and down the sides to get a better workout or just sit and look out of the waves and stuff like that. And it still allows for boats to move below it. Um, so architecture just it doesn't just have to be on the super big stuff you can still keep it in mind while designing small stuff like a set of stairs or a bridge or uh, an open area or just a place where people go on a balcony uh, just really really simple stuff and then you have the super complex stuff like this um, this is basically uh, something that in a game would probably be the main uh, main area. Uh, cut off the, all the ground and it's a spaceship instead. Um, this is just a, goes to show that architects can t think of really, really cool, complex looking stuff. But we're still mostly uh, stuck in the sort of box area like the one in the back here. Um, most of the games today have just the central sort of idea that a building is something you go into and shoot people. It's not supposed to look amazing on its own, um, which I think it should be um, because we can build anything we want to. Basically, you can just decide, I want a building that looks like this and we can have it in game in basically the same amount of time. But an architect can't say, hey, in this city, I want a building that looks like this. Uh, because you either can't build it or you can't get it approved for fire safety reasons or, uh, you know, it's too expensive. Um, I really think we should have more of this in games and less of the super simple stuff that we have today. Um, and 
again, uh, architecture has a really, uh, if you start looking at concept drawings from architecture, you can pick up a bunch of really cool ideas. Um, something like the one on the bottom here, uh, it actually reminds me a lot of the uh, the bridge building from uh, Johnny Mnemonic, however you say that. Um, it's basically just a raised area um, on top of a factory or whatever at the bottom here. And it's a sort of a modular design. So you basically have uh, a, just a standard grid layout and then you add houses wherever you want to basically. And then on top of that you have your offices or shopping malls or whatever. Um, you can put it in in the ocean or a river or um, your game has a setting that uh, the ice caps melted and it's water world or whatever you want to. Um, it's just a way of getting off the ground. You don't have to uh, have it this tall actually. It could just be on top of anything else um, that doesn't require sunlight because it obviously shades a lot. Um, just like you have the one on the right here which is it's basically taking the the basic blocks uh, which is what games have now and then you take something super cool and just sort of place it on top of the other ones it's basically just hanging from the uh, the top of the other buildings and assuming uh, we have a super high-tech setting uh, materials will basically have uh, infinite uh, tensile strength and durability so you can basically create anything you want um, and here's uh, basically another version of the the last uh, modular bit here um, and here you can actually see the grid works um, so they have houses and they have a sort of a football playing field um, it's a bit of a park down here uh, so there's stuff all around um, this might not be super safe. I'd hate to be the one who has to go get the ball all the time if you kick it off the edge, but you know, it's an idea. Uh, it will not be a problem in game space uh, because you can just kill anyone who moves off the side. Um, again, here is another idea. Um, like the others were moving off into positive space, this one is moving into negative space. Um, let's say you have a uh, um, a civilization where uh, building materials is really scarce so uh, to build something like this one uh, in the back you have to actually dig out the uh, building material out of the ground so you end up with the holes anyway and again uh, using the sunlight uh, as the shaft down the middle here um, you can have parks uh, that get sunlight only you know let's say a third of the day or whatever uh, and then you have residential areas and then you can use the difference in height to generate uh, geothermal power uh, stuff like that um, having structures that extend into the ground um, is also clever because you don't have to create the the, uh, the sort of exterior um, you don't have to have this you can just subtract the building out of the ground assuming you have ground which is mass again um, for the next idea here uh, it's basically another version of the theme earlier where instead of having parks on top of the railroad you have uh, sort of water on top of the uh, I don't know flower thingy with a girl and balloons and stuff uh, let's say this is uh, the railroad is underneath and you put a sort of a um, yeah, I don't know what it, what to call this, a sort of an ornamental lake or something on top of already existing stuff. Because again, if you don't have to worry about water leaks, uh, you can do this in games. And uh, I actually have a... Where is it? Here. Um, this is a really old sketch. Uh, How you may live and travel in the city of 1950. Um, this is from, I don't know, the beginning of... 1910 or something uh, so this is a really old sketch and here they have uh, the trains on the bottom with really cool spiral escalators and then you have motor traffic motor traffic and then on top you have the level for pedestrians 
And let's say we took the, the lake concept from the last one. Um, you can have the lake in the middle here. Um, let's say you put water here and then, or you can have water all the way and everyone who wants to can either move along the sides uh, walking or they can uh, hire a sort of a boat and they go from point, point A to point B really quickly by a jet ski when they go out to lunch or whatever. Uh, and then they have buildings on the sides and aircraft landing fields. So this is just a way of planning the city from the bottom to the top. Um, it's something like uh, if you take beneath a steel sky for instance, the lower you get the, the, the lower class of the working people and then the higher you get it's the super rich who can afford a view and uh, things like that. Um, and then here's a really cool concept image that I just picked up. Uh, it's basically a sort of a floating island, or maybe it's attached to the ground, I don't know. But it basically has all sort of different levels of animals, and then you have a superstructure in the middle where people live and work and do anything they want to. You could have it as a cruise ship, or you could have it as a permanent sort of working area. And um, I have no idea what scale this is, because 31,000 and then having the tree up here. Uh, yeah. Let's just pretend that scale doesn't matter, because it really doesn't. Um, so now that I've hopefully made you at least a little more interested in architecture, I will list a few of the different uh, sort of places I go to for architectural inspiration. And the first one, which is the provider of the uh, the most, if not all, of the images I've been using in my sort of video today, um, it's archdaily.com which has several hundred pages of articles and they post, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 every day. Um, it's a really cool website because once you start reading about a certain uh, uh, building, once you reach the end of it, it will say, hey, I see you like this. You might like these buildings as well. So you can basically click endlessly for hours if you want to. So um, that's the best website that I've found for architectural inspiration. I've also saved to my computer like a thousand images, which I've split up into different sections, like office spaces, which is basically uh, buildings that are wide but not tall, and then skyscrapers, which are tall but not wide, uh, personal dwellings, open areas, um, gardens, or uh, things like that. So I have a bunch of different categories and every once in a while I go to Arch Daily and I download you know 20 new images and just sort them up and then every time I start a different uh, mapping project I just run through a few images and I pick out details like I want a bit of this and a bit of this and then I try to incorporate that into my designs. Um, which, because, again, I'm not a modeler, I have a really hard time of doing some things because I can't cre easily create um, bent shapes or complex shapes with the assets that are available in the UDK. Um, so for my next step, I have uh, TED or TED Talks. Um, they have a YouTube channel again, uh, or again, I, as well. Uh, I think it's TED... Um, TED Talks director or something, just search for TED Talks on YouTube, you can find most of theirs. Um, they have a bunch of different talks about design and architecture and living spaces, stuff like that. The last video, um, which I can really recommend, is, is Brilliant Designs to Fit More People in Every City. Uh, basically what it does is it takes up, uh, basically, uh, a city should be made out of uh, different sort of parts where the max distance is 20 minutes walking space and people should never need to have a car because they can always walk these 20 minutes to wherever they need to go or they can take a bike or mass transit or whatever but cities should not be built around the car cities should be built around the movement speed of a single individual just like games should be built around the movement speed of your avatar then i also have 
uh, two books. The first one is a Global History of Architecture, which is a beast of a book, and I really recommend it. It goes through uh, basically the beginning of time to uh, not quite modern time, but at least the 20th century. And it's 864 pages, and you could probably kill people with it. Um, but it's a beast of a book. It goes through separate areas of the world at certain times, and then it runs through the uh, sort of expansion or the development of that area, and then it moves on to the next one until it's done that period of time, and then it moves on a hundred years, and it takes and it starts all over again. Uh, it's a really cool book. Uh, it also has a bunch of different small nuggets of information which I find really interesting. And this is the book that inspired me to do the Knossos map, um, just based off of a few different images of pillars and stuff. And for the next one I have uh, Form, Space and Order, uh, which is not so much about the buildings themselves as it is about the interaction of spaces and the interaction of shapes. Like Instead of having just a flat area, what happens if you do uh, sort of a, a, a lowered part in the middle? What happen, happens if it's uh, really tall? Um, basically, how different shapes interact. It's a pretty cool book. Uh, it's hard to apply, but it gives, uh, or at least it gave me a couple of really cool ideas. Uh, unfortunately, my sister has it right now, so I haven't read it for a while. Uh, but I'd recommend it. Uh, it's just, you know, 16 pounds. It's not a lot of money. Uh, the other one is a bit more expensive, but it's a lot heavier on the content as well. Uh, check them out. If you have a bookstore which you can uh, just go to and pick them up and look them through, I'd really recommend at least looking at them. Uh, that's all for me for today. So thanks for watching. I hope you can recommend this or at least comment on it. Thanks for watching. Bye.